passed away. We wanted men. Welcome to episode 141 of the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. I'm Glenn, and with me is Jason, as always. We're recording on Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, the two or three of you that listen. Yeah, and since we're late, happy Mother's Day 2024. Now we're early. Yes, there you go. Awesome. Oh. How are you doing today, Jason? I'm tired. You're tired? <laughs> Why would you be tired? It was a long day yesterday. Uh, just a little bit, man. Just a little bit. You want to get into it now or you want to wait a little bit? We can get, um, or, well, we can get in and then we'll get into it. We, we um, You came up with a smart idea uh, about six months ago to host a toy show. <laughs> and I think you regretted it ever since. <laughs> yeah, as an introvert, I'm like, no, what would I do? <laughs> It was a fun time. It was, it was great. It was it was a lot of work. Uh, I mean, I think we you did a little bit. I think it was a balance of I did some on the front end, you did some on the back end, and then it just you know it. it but uh, no, it was it was a good a good uh, good team effort. I think. Yeah, absolutely. And then yesterday we had a bunch of uh, some of the club members jump in and help out when we had to step away from the booth or. Uh, you know, we had I handed off raffle tickets to a bunch of people. So I want to thank Skippy and uh Lewis for helping out uh sell some raffle tickets and keep uh keep an eye on the booth when we had to step away. Uh between uh between everything, we raised uh, just shy of thirteen hundred dollars for children's health care of children's health care of Atlanta. Uh and with a little bit, you know, with a small show like that, raising that much money, uh it was uh that's a pretty incredible feat. So uh, thank you for everybody for your help with that. Yeah, thank you very much. I didn't even think so. The low end five hundred dollars was like, I'll, I'll feel good if we get five hundred dollars for Choa. High end eight hundred bucks. You know, I'll be dancing in the street. So to get almost thirteen hundred is, uh, I'm doing backflips and my back is hurting. <laughs> yes, I do a backflip, but for some reason, while we're packing up yesterday, because I'm freaking old. Uh, You're my drinking a Pepsi and I'm drinking a Coke. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, That's sorry. A, yeah, nothing says Atlanta better than Pepsi. Right. Um, Dude, I drink whatever's on sale. So Pepsi yeah. was on sale a few weeks ago. That makes sense. If it's on sale, I just don't buy any soda that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's very rare that I drink. I may drink a soda a day, you know, two or three a week, depending. But it was a soda kind of day. Yeah. Did you uh, pick anything up this week? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, what did I pick up yesterday? I picked up uh, Back to the Future 3 Diamond Select. I think they're 112 scale uh, DeLoreans that got the, uh, they're from Back to the Future 3. One's got the uh, railroad wheels on it. One's got the white wall wheels on it. I picked those up. Uh, picked up uh, about four Christmas tree ornaments. A uh, guy had some had a good deal on those yesterday. Uh, so I picked those up. It was a uh, Naboo star in one starfighter, the uh, Gungan underwater ship. Mm -hmm. And then the, I think the queen Amidala ship, but they were too cheap. And then I got a death star too. Uh, those were just too daggum cheap to let go. And I'm like, it's prequel stuff, but I don't have it. And it was a good deal. Like I said, uh, then what else did I pick up? That he man. Yeah, I picked up a bunch of He-Man from Second Chance uh, while we were while I was walking through there because he had them for like ten bucks a figure, and then he was like, "Go pick out another one." So I I got like six He-Man for the price of two because uh, I think he was trying to get rid of them. And I think that's all I got yesterday. Uh, <laughs> what about the rest of the week? <laughs> I, uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I already talked about the patches I ordered. Uh, I ordered I off eBay. It'll be here. Uh, like there was this defunct uh video 
program, like a beta mask, not a beta max, but a, um, like a DVD, like a precursor to DVD. Somebody had a Bill and Ted version of it still sealed. So I picked that up for cheap. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. It, it was a decent week. Uh, yeah. How about you? Um, I've been out of, I've been traveling a lot this week and I stopped into every Target and Walmart and I did find an ATST Micro Galaxy Squadron that I opened. <gasps> so now I have an ATST and two um, snow speeders. Yeah. So I just need an ATAT to go with this and then I'll have a little diorama. I do have to figure out how to get the wash off of this ATST and try to, you know, whiten it up a little bit for snow. Yeah, I I'll need to. I need to pick up another snow speeder or two because I think having the at at smash a snow speeder would be incredible. And when you mentioned Micro Galaxy Squadron, I totally forgot I found <laughs> uh the Luke Jedi uh X Wing at That's a right. at a Target. I was just looking and I found it. I found that and I found the Kenner Deco uh Boba Fett. Yeah. Hold on. Hey, you hey. leaving? Mm-hmm. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Mandy's leaving. Yeah, you can. There's a little one. cameo appearance. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to dinner. She's going to Mother's Day lunch, dinner, lurch, whatever they want to call it. So we're recording a little early on a Sunday, but late for normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> Normally so we're, we're not over at yet. Yeah. yeah. Um. What else did I pick up? Uh, yesterday at the toy show, I did pick up uh, Inbox, Job of the Hut, Micro Machines Transforming Playset. Yeah. And um, I also have a guardian angel, a TVC guardian angel, who figured out how to order. Oh, oh, from oh! I got eBay you, I got you. UK. Ah, uh, now I see. You yeah. were saying guardian angel, and I'm like, did they make what guard? What figure are you talking about? Yeah, uh, an individual uh, who know who's like a ninja when it comes to eBay, and was able to find eBay listings in the UK. Um that are very difficult to find from the United States for those two posters that they had at uh, Star Wars Celebration Europe. The vintage collection one with the N1 Starfighter and then the Endor Bunker, which is the one I like the most awesome. out of the two. But only limited to 250, so I got really lucky in, in snagging those. Yeah, you're, That's pretty amazing, dude. That is, that's a cool, that's a good friend to have. You need yeah. to keep, keep that person around. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've got a buddy that's up at the uh uh Christmas story house and they're sending me pictures. I'm like, Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> they're sending me pictures through Messenger. They've got him holding the in front of the leg lamp holding a red rider BB gun and then like the nice. the the theme the you know, you'll shoot your eye out stuff. So I well that sequel's not that bad, but I came to find out because I was like, Oh look, it's they're back on the same street, but no. They rebuilt that whole street in like Romania or something like that to film the sequel. Wow. Now you're talking about a Christmas story story. Yes. Or, yeah, yeah, not a Christmas story too. Right. And there was another one, Summer Vacation Summer Story or something like that. No. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. was that Christmas story too? It might it have been place Christmas. In the summer. I, I didn't well, I never watched it, but a Christmas story Christmas or whatever, the one that came out last year was was pretty yeah. good. Anyways. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I picked up this week. Yeah. And uh yeah, we had a, a yeah, the only other thing I picked up was a very hefty uh vet bill. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah. My uh Thursday night we were at my wife's aunt house, aunt's house, and next thing I knew my brand new puppy Canaan is yipping and it's a noise that I never want to hear again. And everybody's like, Yeah, he got bit. So they started looking around and found out as soon as I picked him up, they saw a copperhead. So he got bit by a copperhead a couple of times and thankfully he's okay. But I was a mess because I've never experienced anything of that nature. And that's one of my fears is getting bit, especially in here in Georgia, you know, they're all over the place here. And, um, he, you know, took him to the hospital. My, my wife's aunt was able to give him some pain meds to calm him down. And he spent the night in the hospital and took Friday off to spend some time with him. And he's doing great. The only thing you could tell is, you know, he's got a couple of shaved paws or legs where they had to put the IV and got bit. So How thankfully he, he's good. With all the venom and stuff, didn't they have to administer anti-venom? They don't anymore. 
and they were they that one it it's sort of controversial now i think um because if they administer the anti venom it's not anti venom it's like anti venom so i don't know if it's sync um synthetic or not but they um they said the one doctor was wanting us to do it the other nurse was like you really don't need to do it unless his levels get elevated um and if they do it it's like 4 or 500 dollars for anti on top of a thousand dollar vet bill um so they just gave him fluid and watched him and i think they do the same thing for humans now too they just sort of let things run their course they keep a close eye on you but they don't give it to you unless you need it so it's not an automatic thing anymore i'm gonna have nightmares (laughs) tell me about it dude it was i was a freaking basket case thankfully there was enough people there that i could take him and kind of have a moment you know freak out because i was I was freaking, I was crying like a little girl, you know, cause I, I didn't know what was going on and he's yipping and biting at the air and he, cause he's in extreme pain. And, uh, you know, like I said, there was enough people, they were able to put an eye on the stake, say what it was. And then my, my wife's aunt was able to get painkillers and give it to him. And, and we rushed him to, to the vet and he, uh, was able to pick him up basically about 10 o'clock Friday morning. What, was it a big snake? I have no clue. Well, who saw it? My, I didn't ask. My uh, my mother in law and the aunt saw it, and uh, they I don't know. I I I never asked how big the snake was, but it got him twice. It got him on the base of his tail and on his hind legs. So they think he was kind of running away from it, and they got him. Wow. Yeah. I have to uh, mow my lawn pretty frequently just to try to make sure that the grass is low enough, and we have hawks in the neighborhood. Uh huh. Hopefully they can pick up any snakes going through. Cool. Because I'm deathly afraid of the the snakes. Yeah, it's like in my Indiana Jones. Why did it have to be snakes? But yes, I'm. It's one of my fear that and fire is like, you know, dumb ways to die. I don't want to die either one of those ways. Fire. But yeah. So. <laughs> I have some uh, news. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> let's talk news. Tony Guerrero. Tony Gilroy has officially ceased production on Star Wars Andor due to the writer's strike. He said yeah. he told the guild, um, or he told some. Did I not write this down? Oh, I didn't write down the source. I just continued all writing and writing related work on Andor prior to midnight May 1st. After being briefed on the Saturday show owner meeting, I informed Chris Kaiser at the WGA on Sunday morning that I would be. That would also be ceasing all nine non-writing producing functions. So, um, yeah, he's uh, the show's locked in. There's no more changes that can be made. So hopefully, uh, they have uh, something good going. <laughs> I hope so, because that's gonna really stink. I mean, I know you know Ahsoka's got to be in the can, or pretty damn close to being in the can. Um, so I don't see them delaying that, but it's going to stink for uh, six months to a year. Yeah. I hope, you know, waiting on new stuff. Uh, you know, I definitely, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but, you know, if they're going to pay somebody pennies on the, I know in the music industry with streaming, it ruined the music industry. So that's why, that's why there's two, $300. That's why you're paying two hundreds of dollars for concert tickets nowadays, because that's how artists are making their money. They're not making right. their money on record sales. Like they used to, yeah. Um, and well, I know, I know some of the issues, like uh, with Disney Plus. You know, with the old shows that you would give in, you would have on NBC, ABC, CBS, and all that stuff. You would write your show, and then anytime it played again, you would get residuals. Right. But with something like Netflix or Disney Plus, you put the show out there, and it could be out there forever, and people can watch it three years from now, four years from now. It's like it's all out there. And there's not really a residual thing with that. The other thing, there's two other things. Um, we had talked about this a couple of months ago, how there was like a writer's room assembled for the new Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. And then I think people were getting together, pitching ideas, and then Damon Lindelof went off and did his own um, his own script with someone else. And I think the issue is all those people who were in the room really don't get paid. To It's just like, give me your ideas. And then... It's like a cheap way to get ideas from people and then not have to pay them for writing anything. Uh huh. So I think that's one of the issues because I think they want to end that. And then the other big one is that uh, with the AI, 
being a player now, um, AI can start writing shows for us. Right. Take, taking the people out of it. But if it's anything like the AI art that I'm seeing, I don't know if I want that. Yeah, and that brings up another issue because some of that AI, I, AI art pulls from other media. So it's like stealing art to make new art. Right. So with AI-generated um, shows, are they going to be stealing scripts to rework scripts and make new scripts? I don't know. Yeah, it just it doesn't sound... Yeah, it's all a slippery, slippery slope. And you, 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 I don't mean slippery slope. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you think... I, I hope everybody gets their stuff worked out and uh, we can get back to getting some new content soon. But it is uh, you see a lot of actors that are that are standing in the picket line. So I'm curious, uh, you know, what's going to happen. Um, according speaking of AI, according to at Jeremy Com, a, a.k.a. Jeremy Padaware, chief brand officer at Jazzwares, he said on Twitter, we're also we are um, using AI to aid development of our new e-commerce site. It's increasingly coding efficiency by fifty percent with predictive co coding. This is actually insane. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> you're putting software developers out of jobs now too. But a, they're using AI to make a new site. B, they're making a site that we can order our, our Micro Galaxy stuff from, and we don't have to uh, search stores anymore. Dude, as long as it works, I that's all I care about. I mean, it works for uh, Mythic Legions, you know? So yeah. why wouldn't it work for uh, Micro Galaxy Squadron? And I'm sure they can cut the middleman out. Uh, I know they're still, uh, set, you know, they're still third party. You still toy shops and stuff that you could buy Mythic Legions from. But yeah, why not, man? And then the last piece of news that I have... Uh, Jalel White, who plays a pirate in the upcoming series uh, Skeleton Crew, shared some information in a recent interview. He said, yes, yeah, Skeleton Crew is coming out November, December, and it's part of the Star Wars universe. So we have Ahsoka in August and Skeleton Crew November, December. Awesome. Did you uh, hear about the runtime of Ahsoka? What are they, like 30 minutes each mm -hmm. episode? No? It's 60. Eight oh. 60 minute episodes is what the rumor has of Ahsoka. I hope that's true because, you know, Wednesday you, you pull up the Mandalorian, and you're like, oh, this is only 30. Oh, I'm like, oh, this is only like 38 minutes. This is not fun. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it would be. I, I, I hope that's true because then you're really, we're going to get some pretty, hopefully, pretty insane content. Yeah. I hope so. And that's it for news. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so we did a toy show. Yeah, that was, dude, uh, for the amount of work that that was, it was an awesome day. Yeah. Um, the weather held out. Yeah, it was hot, but it wasn't too bad. We, uh, you, what actually, what, what, what happened was, I guess about what, a year ago, you had come up with the idea. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Six months, a year ago, I don't know, sometime in the past, you came up with the idea of let's host a swap meet. And we've hosted swap meets before uh, through the club, and it's been pretty successful, but we wanted to take it up a notch and, you know, do like a, a full-fledged show. Uh, and Second Chance, we approached Second Chance about hosting it there uh, in Marietta, and they were, they were gracious enough to let us host uh, the event there. They actually stepped up uh, and got a food truck which was nice because we were able to just walk across the parking lot and get something to mm -hmm. eat. Uh, and I think it brought us a little bit more exposure because when you see a food truck in a parking lot, you're probably, especially if you know that there's a toy shop or a shop you like in the parking lot, and there's a food truck, you're going to pull in and see what's going on. Um, yeah. So I think it brought us some exposure. Uh, what else? We, you reached out to the 501st and become, I think, a pretty uh, a good acquaintance with the guy that yep. runs it. Yeah, and they showed up. I I was thinking what one or two people, and we had like five or six. Yeah, we had three Jawas, one Scout Trooper, Biker Scout, and, and a First Order Special Forces type pilot. Yeah, so that was the Jawas were kind of fun because they were they they get kind of annoying because they start stealing stuff, and I always forget to bring stuff excuse me stuff to trade with the jawas because they'll trade with you yeah and they had like little duckies little squeezy ducks that they were trading i've seen them trade like little mouse droids uh 
you know, like little, little trinkets. Uh, so it's always fun to trade with Jawas. And we were kind of messing with the scout troopers and be like, this Jawa is stealing my crap. And they'd run after the Jawa. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it was, it was fun messing with them and they were, they were awesome. They hung out the, the scout trooper and the tie pilot hung out, I think the whole time. And the job yeah. was left about halfway through, but still yeah. they hung out several hours and they do that for free. You know, yeah. they, they, they do that out of the kindness of their heart. To uh, help support the the effort. Right. And sure. exactly. And you know, that was, that was awesome. So I, I thanks to five for the Georgia Alliance and the Georgia Alliance, the Georgia 501st for coming out. Uh, the, Garrison, the Georgia, Georgia Garrison. 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 There you yeah. go. Uh, yeah. It was the, I like the, type uh the first order type pilot because he walked up to our backdrop which is a card back yeah and he pushed him pushed himself against the back and just stood there like he's on card <laughs> and he yeah, was just hanging out there for a few minutes i caught him doing it a couple times and i was like that's awesome yeah yeah the guys at second chance are awesome um david chance and elijah and then they've got they had a couple of guys from their ebay store come over yeah. and uh help out and run the store uh you know and help out with the the event and they were gracious enough to clean out their back room. So the 501st had a changing area and uh, they gave us access to their restrooms, which, you know, truthfully, they didn't have to do because we had a lot of people running through there. Yeah. Um, and what else? They gave them, they donated a bunch of stuff. We had a raffle after because we did a raffle and then we did like a an auction afterwards. And between those two, like we said, and the, and the fun and from the, uh, booth sales because we didn't charge anything it was free admission but we the we asked for a 20 dollars donation for the uh the vendors and between all that we raised just shy of 1300 dollars. so that was pretty amazing it was it was freaking awesome yeah we had it was uh during the auction we had a couple of uh, little kids that were bidding so you know we had people kind of messing not messing with them but they'd play with them and then when they got to a certain point they'd let the kid win uh, there was one little kid that kept raising the, you know, it was like a $10 bid and he's like $25. <laughs> and then the dad's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, 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 let's do 12. A thousand dollars. I Which want that two. rate figure. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't have done it without them. So thank yeah, you. It was, thank it was you. awesome. And we had several people that, um, I actually, uh, I forgot it was a husband and wife and I suck at names and I'm sorry for forgetting your name because I suck at names, but I met him at Target a few weeks ago and we were talking Michael Galaxy, Galaxy Squadron and we talked about the club and then we talked about the show and then they were, I talked about the podcast and then they were, um, they were at the show yesterday. Oh, wow. So they were like, Hey, you're the guy with the podcast. I'm like, yes, I am. Hello there. And, uh. I said, hey, did you know we got the guys from Micro Galaxy Squadron on? And they were like, oh, my God, I got to listen to that. Yeah. Uh, Because that's what we were talking about at Target. And um, I think it, no, I want to say Tyler, but it's probably wrong. But anyway, uh, so they were there and they were just like, yeah, we were making our rounds. And I talked to two or three different people that were just like, we're making our Saturday rounds and we saw this was going on. So let's, you know, we came and check it out. That was the most difficult part was trying to promote it and get people to thing and i was hitting our our club and the georgia action figure collective and talking to adam throne um during the thing he's like well there's the north georgia club there's the atlanta action figure club like there's all these different facebook groups that i could have been blasting out to so lesson learned going forward if we do something like this again i have more um buckets i can dip my toes into to promote it well it's also hard because with those communities the I've I've ran into issues with some of those Facebook groups where you're not active in it enough or you're you know you're promoting stuff and then they get mad at you so yeah. you've got to kind of it's a fine line you've got to you've got to uh tread with that kind of stuff but I've also you know we were talking to uh Martin I was talking to Martin cuz Martin and David were hanging out in the back uh back room and I talked to them for a few minutes and Martin was saying how hard it is to do this kind of stuff and he said he had somebody that had no clue that just somebody, Oh, I'm a big collector. Didn't put the time in, in the community. Like we, you know, cause we're in the community, you know, you've got to, and he was like, yeah, I want to put on a show. And Martin's like, nobody knows you, man. Why would you, you know, you know yeah. how much harder you're, you're going to have to work because nobody knows who you are to put on a toy show. Mm -hmm. And it was like, dude, we also have a toy show almost every other week in Atlanta, which is awesome. Um, uh, that's you know, the other. That's the other thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, 
we're saturated here. We don't need to host another toy show because there's you throw a stone on any weekend or I don't know if that made any sense. But anyways, there's one every weekend. It's like eh, it's another toy show. I can skip the next two and go to the third one. You right. Know? And, and I think we might have run into a little bit of that because there was a big toy show last weekend in Gwinnett. Um, but I still think it was a good show because we had we actually had a guy that said that he made did better at our show than he did in Gwinnett. So and that Gwinnett show was was a good size show. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So, I mean, but everybody I talked to, uh, you know, seemed to have a good time. The vendors were like, you know, I've had good shows. I've had bad shows, but I haven't had fun. And this show, I had fun. Yeah. That's that's an important element. <laughs> having fun. <laughs> Everyone I mean, we seemed ha- to be jamming and having fun. Yeah. We, oh, the guy, nerd, you guys were there. They, they brought a boom box and they were pumping everything. They were pumping yeah. Star Wars music all day. Those guys bring it for every show. And, you know, I got to say, you you took it up a notch and I didn't think about it. But I, you know, you're because you were like pumping, you know, vendors were showing up. You were you were running a car. Lewis was running a car. Whoever was free was helping vendors unload. And I'm like, oh, crap, let me go help. Yeah. Um, you know, and they were they were nerdy, nerd. You guys were like, man, this was great because I've never had a toy show where I've had people help me load in and out and uh, not have to bust my butt to to get my stuff in, and I think every vendor we were like, yeah, let's let's go. What 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 do you need? Uh, you know, we had little little things like having water. You know, a, a, a ice chest full of water for the vendors that goes a long way with vendors. You know, yeah. Um, and they appreciate stuff like that. So I, I you know, if we decide to do it again, I, I think it'll be successful. We just need to, you know. I think like you were saying, advertise it a little harder, but it, it's so hard to advertise stuff on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I mean, heck, I, I stopped advertising the podcast on Facebook and unless only if we have a big episode because people get tired, not people get tired of it, but it doesn't doesn't seem to do anything. Yeah. The algorithm also messes with you on Facebook because there's no guarantee people will actually see it. Yeah. So that's another challenge with Facebook. And uh, I, I would make like the little cards and put them out in different places months leading up to the show. If we do that again. Yeah. I think that's um, the one mistake we made. I think that's probably the only mistake we made. Yeah. Is not having postcards. Yeah. Um, because there's also plastic empire was doing something. They were doing a signing. Yeah. And then there was some sort of monster con. Monster yeah. There was event. A, yeah. A monster event in Marietta, like 10, 20 minutes away. So it would have been, it'd have been real easy to, to get with those people and been like, yeah. Hey, we're having a show the same day, 20 minutes away. Well, give me some fly. Let's fly or swap, and we could promote each other. Yes. So, those are the things I learned that I would do differently as a promoter. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I mean, what what else was tough? Because we didn't have. I mean, what? I I don't think we had a hard time getting vendors because we never really announced it. We never had a chance to announce it to the general public because yeah. pretty much everybody I asked to vend because I knew people I knew from the year. You know, there again, like I was saying earlier being in the community and and making contacts is big because when you ask people hey we're doing a show they're going to jump at it because they're they're your friend and they know you and they trust you uh so we never really announced it to the general public that we had vendor space open yeah um so i mean what else would you consider like i, I that would advertising it and then getting vendors i think would be the number number 1 and number 2 hardest things to do but Number two, you know, the vendors we didn't really have an issue with. Was there anything else? No, that was it. I think the only other thing I would want to do is put more signage by the road yeah. just for the passerbys. Um, I could I could have easily done that. I just it's been so busy. I probably anyways, I could do that for next time. Yeah, I think and then, that yeah. And then signage for the uh, raffle. Yeah. Just something bigger than post-it notes, which is my <laughs> improv 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 improvisation right well fly. yeah it just it's little things like that that we just you forget about because you're looking at the bigger picture and we did have people that were trying to like buy our raffle prizes and we're like we're doing a raffle yeah that uh, was the issue like this I, is I, raffle right and, and they were like oh i'm not going to be here at two and maybe we should do you know maybe maybe do something where we're raffling it off every half hour or, or something i don't know but it's you know that would be the only thing I would change. Maybe we get more more people uh, if we did yeah, something like that. We also said eleven to four. We did the raffle at two, and the show was over at three because everything seemed to die after that raffle. Yeah, the crowd kind of left, and 
we could have kept things going. And then we could have done like the grand prize raffles at two thirty or something like that. Well, that's yeah. We I mean, there's ways that we could have done it. Uh, but uh, you know, we've dealt. I've dealt with raffles where you're trying to hunt people down and get them items, and it's it's a pain in the butt to to do that. Uh, maybe we could do something where hey, we're gonna leave it at second chance. You got to come get it if second chance. If the guys at second chance are cool with it, uh, next year or next time we do it. If we do it next time, but. I don't know. I mean, right now, I think we're just kind of riding a high. We got other other fire irons in the fire that we're yeah, we trying do. to deal with that a toy show is not top of mind. Yeah. Uh, going back to uh, Toylanta, we normally do some sort of raffle during Toylanta. And because of just how busy, you know, coming off of we had a busy fall. Um, I was hosting the winter social, so I was getting ready for that. I didn't have any energy to put towards getting uh, artists to participate in the Toylanta raffle. Um, uh, we kind of, that kind of fell by the wayside for Toy, uh, for Toylanta this year. We didn't have anything for the auction, but, you know, looking back there, there was no space to have an auction. There was no opportunity. We couldn't, our table was pushed up against the window. There was nothing we could put out. So it kind of worked out for the best that we just kind of held it over till May. And this was the big, charity thing and i think if we had done something at toylanta we'd probably get the same result about thirteen hundred dollars yeah i was i was once i saw our setup for toylanta i was really happy that we didn't push anything um because i think it was i don't want to say it was a last minute thing but they were they kind of had us in a hallway and they might have thought we could push the table out or do some more do more than what we could but then when we asked a hotel they were like you it's a fire hazard you can't move the table so yeah uh yeah i was real happy with the with that decision yeah. So, but they haven't announced where they're going to do Toy Lana next year yet. So, hopefully, I'm I'm really hoping they find a Civic Center somewhere and pull like a Joe Fest where it's just in one yeah. big room. Because those are my favorite kind of toy shows. Because you yeah. don't, you know, you nobody gets lost in those like they did, uh, you know, in the in the side rooms and stuff in Toy Lana. Yep, I agree. Um, so hopefully that'll work out. Yeah. But people were saying, if uh, next year, let us know. We want to do it again. And I'm like, uh, let me get through this weekend before I start thinking about next year. <laughs> no, we did. We had quite a few people that were like, yeah, let's go again. And, you know, the guys at Second Chance are asking us about it again. So I, all in all, I can I, I would say it's probably 75 <laughs> percent. You know, I would I would be willing to do it again. You know, give it give it 75 percent. Uh, but let's let's get through let's get through twenty three before we commit to another. Let's get one. through the summer, yeah, <laughs> at least because we got the summer social coming up with the club, and that's that's always a big event. And then the winter social, and yeah, we just yeah, let's just we've had a very exciting year. Let's just get through this year, and then we can decide what we want to do. And we may be working on a May fourth, twenty twenty four event as well. You're right. So we'll see. That that's uh, we'll have another podcast about that. When yeah, at that some gets point. Here. Oh I mean, God. we're kind of putting feelers out there and asking people if we did some sort of weekend event, would people be interested? And, in, you know, with uh, Celebration 2025 being in Japan and not a lot of people can actually fly to Japan, can they do something in the States? Can we all get together in Atlanta or something like that? Right. So we have, yeah, we have ideas so it- for panels and we have ideas for other things so we're like maybe we can make this work yeah the biggest the biggest truthfully the biggest issue we're having with that right now and we're just starting is is a price point you know you're trying to keep make it affordable and it's really really hard to to find an affordable place yeah but we're not done but we yeah we we're, there's plenty of places in atlanta for us to to look so we'll see I would, yeah because i mean i would hope by the end of the summer we would have some place kind of Oh, we, by by the end of the summer, we need to have some place nailed down yeah. so we could start pushing it. Yeah. So. And then I was looking at like ticket vendors, uh, vendors that can uh, sell and and give you the money for the tickets and stuff with a small service fee. There was one place called Brown. I don't even want to mention them. They they stopped giving people their money. Really? Like, yeah, straight up. Like, oh, we don't have it right now. We can't give you the twenty-seven thousand dollars we owe you. No, but they're still taking money from other people. That's not cool. No. So those are the kind of pitfalls that we got to avoid yeah. in this process of trying to put something together. But 
Yeah, because that would be that would be devastating if we, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, when you when you when you look at numbers, it's you know, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars to to put on an event like that, and I could not imagine getting you know, oh, we can't give you your tens of thousands of dollars because you'd have to go get a loan. It's a car. It's the price of a car to put on an event like this. Yeah, and yeah. that's something that was kind of shocking to me. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll get it going. Yeah. It'll be awesome. I mean, it, it, yeah, I think it'll be cool. We'll, we'll figure some things out. There's a lot, you know, there's things we can do in Atlanta to have a good time and we'll, we'll make it happen, man. Yeah. So what else? I don't know. What else is there to talk about? I don't know. We've been talking for what, like forty-five minutes? Yeah, yeah that? it's only like two forty-five. It's two fifty. We've actually done a pretty decent job, but uh, I mean, there's not. Uh, did you have you watched all of Visions? Yes, I finished them. I think I've got two left, but it was one of those. I'm not. I'm not real impressed with. I mean, it's cool, but I don't like. I don't really like that kind of. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's the storytelling or if it's the the animation that I don't like you know because it's a 20 minute short and it's in the 20 minute bubble and it has no effect on anything else that's outside of this 20 minute bubble um so i don't know if that's not what i like or do i not like the fact that it's something different animation and story writing you know because you go from like the first one that's really autistic uh, artistic artistic and you know it's got the painting and everything and it's visually uh, appealing or you know and then you end up with you know, I thought that I did watch like the Indian one where the Indian Jedi. Yeah. Uh, that I thought that one was great. That yeah. one was really interesting. The animation on it was very well done. The story was good. Uh, but there again, you got, like you said, with the first one, you've got somebody leaving somebody and what's going to happen with that kid. Yeah. It's like an open door or uh, open ending, I should say. And it's like, feels like the first chapter of a bigger story. Yeah. And I wanted to watch more of some of those, that right. one in particular. Um, it was like a Clone Wars episode. It's like, okay, I'll wait for next week to see what happens next. But there is no next week. Right. But so, that yeah. one, the Indian-inspired one, um, the only problem I had at the beginning was that kid was just a little too annoying. It's just like, can you not just sit down for five minutes? <laughs> well, that's what Don't play the damn off. flute. Right. you Because you wanted a flute, and you couldn't wait for him to go. First, you wanted food, and then you wanted your flute, and you couldn't wait and say, hey, throw me my flute. You used the force to get the flute, and everybody's like, oh, you're a force user, so let's yeah. go get him. Kids. Yeah, freaking kids. Freaking oh. kids. Yeah. What is their problem? Um, so, but I, I think it would be, if I had to pick two of them, I, know I, I don't think I watched the last one, and I watched it. I didn't pay it. When I watched them, I was doing other things. So it's not like I sat there and watched them, you know. Yeah. But I think the Indian one and the I Am Your Mother were my favorite ones. I Am Your Mother. I was a little disappointed. I thought it'd be funnier. At least they brought... Um, uh, what the heck? Uh, they brought Wedge Antilles back. Yeah, that was so good. But that was Wedge played was by just... the same character. Yeah, the same actor. Just... Right. He was just being, um, you know, I'm a superstar. This is what you're going to do. And yay. And, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed that one. It was a good one. Uh, but yeah, they had some good parts. They had a couple of good uh, Easter eggs in there because one of the ships was the same ship that was in Jedi Fallen Order. Yes. Yeah. So that was a kind of a cool Easter egg. That's a nice Easter egg. Yeah. Yeah, the last two, uh, the pit, I, I was pulling it up on my phone. That's why I was slightly distracted there a moment ago. <laughs> I was like, I hope that's not bad news. No, the pit and Ayu I- song, they're good. I mean, the pit was more of season one of Visions, so I was less. Uh, it's more of a metaphor than it is like an actual story, I would say, because uh-huh. the story doesn't make sense. But I don't want to spoil that. Yeah. Sorry, somebody posted like this really weird ass Grand Admiral Thrawn thing on one of the Facebook groups. Anywho, uh, when you see Thrawn or anything from Rebels, it's like, huh? <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. But yeah, I don't know. 
I don't want to drag the show out if there's nothing else to talk about. I don't think there really is. I mean, is there anything? Uh, there's nothing going. I'm going to Disney World next week, so I'm yeah, we'll have a trip that. report next week. Yes, we'll have a trip report next week. So I'm looking forward to that. That a uh, uh, first solo trip, first ever solo trip to Disney World for me. So the wife, uh, my wife doesn't like going. Well, not that she doesn't like going to Disney World. She's just grew up up in Florida, and she's like, "Yay, Disney World!" Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> no yeah. more. I don't even get the, I get the, duh. I said, she's like, well, first of all, it's like, we're going to Florida. And she goes, no, I don't even get the words out of my mouth. Jeez. <laughs> it's that bad. Wow. So she's like, no, you can't go to Disney or I'm not, <laughs> or no, not, not that I can't, you're, I'm not going to Disney. So we end up making two different trips. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm there's, there's a, uh, Wednesday night, there's an after hours event at Hollywood Studios. So I'm really hoping the whole re- that's the whole reason why I'm going because I don't want to wait two hours to for Rise of the Resistance. And yeah. I'm hearing there's like 20 minute wait for Rise. So I'm, yeah. I'm that's going to be so I know because you get in at seven. So it's like seven to one in the morning. And I know doggone good and well, and I can have a blast in like five hours at Hollywood Studios. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I go in June, but I'm going to Epcot. I'm not going to uh, Hollywood Studios. Yeah. Well, Epcot, Epcot, they're doing some cool stuff. I'm hoping uh, I can ride Guardians. Guardians and Ratatouille. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the two, and then I'm hoping I can get a ticket for Tron. Get on Tron. Uh, I'm spending a full day at Magic Kingdom on Thursday, so hopefully I can get on one of the queues, uh, virtual queues for Tron. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Tron, uh, it's it's like a 58 second ride. It took them five years to build this thing. That's Disney, man. That's Disney. Jeez, Get dude, they're together. still working on Epcot, man. They, when I went to Epcot in 19, Epcot was a, the whole front of Epcot was a construction zone, and it's still a construction zone. What five, six years later? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you got to, you know, yes, there was the pandemic in the middle of it, but it, I, I, I and then like. When you look at what Universal's doing, Universal, when the pandemic hit, they were building Coloss- uh, the Dinos, the Velociraptor yep, thing. Velocicoaster. Hey, Velocicoaster. And they were just like, F it, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, when the pandemic hit, they were just like, cool, we can build 24-7, let's go, because there's nobody in the parks. And that's what Universal did, where Disney was like, oh, no, we can't build a roller coaster. Yeah, um, they uh, screwed themselves over with Fox. They're now... They have tons of debt when they bought Fox Studios, and they can't shake it. You yeah. can't really build if you owe people money. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I know there uh, there's some exciting. They, they had just announced. I don't, I'm sure you saw it, that the yeah, January 9th, 2024, no more reservation system. They're redoing for the some thing. Days. For some days. No, that's for, that's for everybody. Pass holders are still going to have a reservation system. I or they're going to have some days it's not needed. Oh. I'm not well, anyways. <laughs> anyway, there 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 is some and then dining plans coming back and there's some good you know, hopefully early next year Disney will be able to come back to its uh former glory soon. Let's Which so I hope so cuz there's there's rumors of a trip in 2025. I made the fourth thing in 2025, so we'll see. Yeah. It's yeah, not a rumor, it's a thing. It's a thing. Well, fine. I'm wanted to say rumor, but it's a thing. I mean, there's nothing official, if that's what you mean. Yes, yeah, nothing <laughs> official, but people will be in Disney World in May the 4th, 2025. Yes. Because there's no damn celebration in US. And then uh yeah, so we'll see what happens in 27. So that's five, four years away. Yay. Yeah, yes. Okay. All right. Anything else? Huh. Nothing. Nothing else is really coming up here soon, is there? No, it's going to be quiet, which is fine because I got graduations coming up and uh, trips to Disney and trips to Chicago and Chicago. It's it's going to be a busy summer. Yeah, and I might be going back to PowerCon maybe in yeah. August. That would be a fun trip. Yeah, it would be. Although I'm. I don't know if I'll have money for it by the end of the <laughs> summer. If it was now, yeah, sure. But uh, who knows? All this Ooh. traveling. It's Masters of the Universe stuff. You don't want to buy anything anyway. Yeah, but there was that one vendor, and I he was just like giving stuff away. 
That's where yeah. I got the Imperial Officer for 75 bucks on cards. Nice. You don't get those prices anymore. So it's like I, I at least need 75 bucks for that. That that I will say, I will say that there was some very good pricing at the show because I were nerd you had some very yep. they were like they had a couple of men on cards. I think one was a hundred, one was 130, uh, some Ewoks, and then all like all their loose complete figures were twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. Except for like Boba Fett, that was you know the Boba Fett tax. Yep. But I yeah, yeah, they were like yeah, we're we're getting rid of it, or you know, they're wanting to sell it. And they had one guy. I was standing there. They had a Kylo Ren lightsaber, and they had like one thirty on it. And the guy was like, "For a hundred, I I wouldn't even think twice about it." And they're like, "Sold." <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> we will make that deal, sir. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, yeah, I think everybody was happy with the toy show. I know we were. I you know it was it was an exhausting day, but. Wow, was it fun? I love a good toy show, and that was a good the 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 vibe was was awesome. I think we had a really good vibe at that toy show, and that yeah. I think that makes a toy show over a crowd. If you yeah. you know, if you can make and, money and have a good time, that's what counts. And the people who did come, even though it wasn't as much as I had thought we would get based on the limited promoting I did, they were leaving with stuff in hand. So the people who came bought stuff. Yeah. It's not like people came, looked, and then left. A lot of them were leaving with bags or were holding boxes or whatever the case may be. So, right, people people were buying, so that's awesome. Yep, awesome. Yeah, let's wrap this up. All right, thank you for listening to the Smugglers Galaxy podcast. If you could please leave a like and a five star review of the show anywhere you listen to your podcast, if it's allowed, it really helps us out and points people to our show. Follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Send us an email or message us. We'd love feedback. We'd love to make you part of the show. Our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Um, before you do the thank yous, I also want to say thank you to Narayan, who also got the pins for us from Star, Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. Um, he got, yeah, he, that was cool. He got the same ones uh, Dan got us. So, <laughs> But he also got two other ones. So thank you for getting that and the... Uh, blind boxes from celebration so now yeah we've got two that was of them awesome with the, with the little sticker on it so thank you norian thank you to alfonso riviera for the smugglers galaxy logo you could find him at rock the force podcast thank you to levi waterhouse for the smugglers galaxy music hasbro re-release vc66 hashtag vote with your wallet pass on what you've learned be a positive force in the collecting community this is the way this is the way